Hello, everyone. Welcome to the first podcast for Fifi and Dre. I am Fifi. That is my friend, my friend Dre, or Andre. Guten Tag. Hello, guten Tag. We get us in. C- can you repeat the name of the podcast one more time, please? Uh, do I have to? Yes. All right. Fifi and Dre, Dre, Drew. You got Good it. Enough. Perfect. Right? perfect. It was How perfect. would you pronounce? It doesn't matter, Felipe. We can move on from that. Uh, that's the name of our podcast. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> We're very excited. Just a couple of regular Germans. Oh, excited to talk to each other. A second. Let, let's not go that far with the German. I am German, that is true, as well. But I'm originally Brazilian. And I can say that I'm like 70% Brazilian, 30% German nowadays. Well, what are you on paper these days? Both. Both. Huh? Yes. Well, I let's mean, get... It's to say in Germany what I am exactly. Then, of course, I am in the country as a German, but I am both and mostly Brazilian still. Look at that. Let's let's take a step back then, Felipe. Let's take a step back then, Felipe, and introduce ourselves a little bit. Oh, yeah, true. Maybe we can each tell a story because we don't want to spend too much time on introducing ourselves. We also want to get to some some hot topics. So maybe we we can stick to to one story um, that kind of, you know, exemplifies who we are a little bit. And I suggest that we suggest what the other person should tell. So I have a great story, my favorite story of yours. We've known each other for many years, and I think there's no better story to understand who you are and where you come from than that vacation home story um, that you told when you introduced yourself when you came to Germany. Maybe you can introduce yourself by telling that story just quickly. The vacation like, home. Your vacation home, this place that you go to in your home country, <laughs> have a good time. Uh, you mean the beach house? Uh-huh, I uh, do. Well, yeah, but you know, beach house, yes. Um, it's a great place to go where all your dreams come true. It's always mm-hmm. sunny. Uh, mm-hmm. The sea is like the this precious stone, the jade, the kind of green one, but the beautiful green, very close to blue. Uh, food is amazing. And that is where I normally used to spend most of my weekends. Uh, we would go down on Friday, spend the whole weekend at the beach, enjoying, doing some scuba diving, some skiing with the boat. Um, but yeah, but it, it was that a story, a particular one that you want me to tell? And, and, and this is at the Ostsee, right? The Ostsee? Well, <laughs> I would call it the the east, if anything, is there, because the it's east. the east of Brazil. Yes. Mm-hmm. So you're from the east of Brazil. Yes. North, and, uh, north east. Northeast. Yes, the best part of Brazil. And hey, see, the other part of Brazil are not great. I'm just saying they're not as good as we are. As as we'll get to that at some point about you <laughs> hating on other parts of Brazil. Exactly. And then we'll invite other Brazilians to hate on your part of Brazil, and then we'll have a nice... Well, it's a jealous... For, for the yeah. other other nationalities, people who are outside of Brazil, I can never trust your word on Brazil, you know, because you're, you're very, um, you, you have a lot of prejudices from your region. So I always have to talk to other Brazilians to get a a better picture and, and but for now, for now, we'll, we'll, we'll take your prejudice, Northeastern Brazilian beach house view. And, I think it is a prejudice. It's just we are very different people all around Brazil. And uh, I have the tendency to believe that the nicest people live in the Northeast. Mm. And that's not prejudice at all. No. But Brazil is a big country. It's a lot bigger. How, many, how much bigger is it than Germany? Oof, way too much. We can pretty much fill the whole Europe into Brazil if you don't put Russia in it. The whole Europe? Yep. Really? So you can have a figure out how big the shit. Got to kind of squeeze it in, right? You got to got to wrap. Oh yeah, you move it down. How the map is. Got to push it against Italy, Italy, which will Italy, cause absolute Italy, mayhem. England rotate somehow. Then it fits perfect. Yeah. As that's really what it meant to be. A chiropractor adjustments to Europe, and then there you go, and then you feel Europe. a lot better. And that's exactly what Brazil is a better Europe. Okay, let me rephrase a little. <laughs> and that's exactly why you're here and not there. Am I right? <laughs> we will get there one day. That's our go. <laughs> You'll get there. Yes, to be the better Europe. <laughs> that is. A, I wish you best of luck. Country. Yeah, 
That was a great story, Felipe, because we know each other from, from university days. In, that is very true. Where, where were we again? We were in Karlsruhe, in the south of Germany. Uh, a great city if you want to spend two days there, if you want to spend a little bit longer, but I recommend to go anywhere else. But <laughs> all in all, it's a cool city, a little bit the north of Stuttgart. Uh, where you have the great KIT or the Kazoo Institute for Technology. Uh, and that's exactly where we met. Uh, I think I, I'm not much older than you. I was just senior by one year, correct? You were senior by one year, but in life terms, you're a senior by, it feels like a century. <laughs> well, you know, maturity is something that is true. It, independent of your age is depending on what you lived in your life. I agree with you 100%. And that's mm -hmm. why I sound so mature. It feels like I'm 100 years old. You're correct, mm -hmm. Andrew. You know me very well indeed. If that's if that helps you sleep at night, Felipe, then go go with that storyline. Uh, Denial and delusional; those are the best words one can have. <laughs> See, now we're getting to know each other. Now we're getting into it. There we go. Our listeners know you better already, and it's the real you. you yeah, know? we were studying mechanical engineering in Karlsruhe when we met. I was one year senior of yours. We actually in the same kitchen, even. Uh, mm -hmm. We were flatmates, you could say. When you went to Karlsruhe again, where are you coming from? Because you live in many countries uh in along your life correct could you give us a yeah. few hint of it so 2007 we met um in Karlsruhe mm -hmm. you were already there and I came to study mechanical engineering and I had just moved from Abu Dhabi oh yeah true yeah. The Middle East the hot yeah hot Middle East yeah okay. yeah yeah it can get uncomfortable uh, uh, how many degrees did you get there maximum you know, luckily, I would always come back in the summers because in the oh, summers is when the real roasting happens. Really. Otherwise, it's it's not too bad. Otherwise, it, it generally stays between like 20 and 35 degrees, oh, or 20, cool. 40 degrees uh, for, for most of the year. Yeah, but then cool. in the summer months, like June, July, it goes over 50 and, and you're cooking, you know, like I would go out to the pool. And I felt my skin burning, you know, I felt I could smell it. And I thought, no, 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 this is not, this is not good look. Nice meat, I should have a bite. And I'm not kidding. And, and, and you could, and you know how this is like this cliche thing of when it's hot, you, you make a fried egg on the hood of your car. Yep. You could do that. You could do that. I mean, I did it, but you could. And it was a hot place. And it was definitely a, a very different kind of place to Germany. So coming from there to Germany was a bit of an adjustment. Is it? Uh, yeah. All right, please enlighten us. Why? Sorry. I mean, interesting also, uh, you know, I, I prefaced by saying we're just a couple of Germans. And I think anybody with ears uh, could, could tell by now that that's probably not the case. I sound like an American and you definitely sound like you're from some foreign exotic place. So <laughs> there is definitely more background to us. And yeah, man, I, I, I didn't live in Germany for 17 years. That is no, crazy. excuse me, that's wrong. For 13 years, uh, between four and 17. So I left Germany when I was four and I came back when I was 17 to study. So it was an adjustment moving to Germany, although on paper, technically I'm German because I just hadn't experienced it. And, and living in other countries is, is uh, believe it or not, very different to living in this country. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I fully believe I did have my share of international travel as well. Uh, but I believe you, when you came here to Germany, uh, when I met you, I didn't really see you much as a German, it's true. I would look at you more like an American uh, alone, by the way, you talk and uh, like rap a lot. I remember Kenny West and uh, I don't know what else from me. This is an American man. It's, yeah. and because that's where we had this friend in common, Skull Olio, who is also German, but born and raised in the US. Uh, and coincidentally enough, it started with you in Houston, right? Yeah, yeah. We, we went to the same school in Houston. And uh, I think that definitely. Um, played a factor is that, you know, there was two Germans on paper who kind of um, acted a little bit more American um, or sounded more American in the way they talked and stuff. So I think that like the combination of us two definitely uh, had that image, but let's not sugarcoat it. I, I was very much not a typical German. Uh, I still am not, but I think I've moved more in that direction after being here for 13 years. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, I think, I think definitely, uh, the fact that it was an international kind of a place where we were at, we were studying engineering, but we were studying it in English, uh, really led to this kind of 
great mixture of people from all different countries. Very intercultural and, club. Yeah, very intercultural, um, uh, very uh, different types of people put into one building. It was like a dormitory. And it was it was pretty wild to say the least. I'd love to get into some of the stories from those days sometime, but uh, yeah, let's let's maybe move on into a little bit more about what we want to talk about today. So um, we got to know, or, or people listening got to know us a little bit. Indeed, I think uh, uh, we already introduced cool. ourselves very well. Now let's say why we're here and why. I don't know about well. I don't know about well, but we definitely gave a couple of snippets and. We'll keep it mysterious. We'll keep well, it mysterious. Well, we exactly. Yeah. We need to make people curious to know a little bit more about us. We can do the following. Yeah. Every every time we say a little bit more so people yeah. can trace. Uh, Why would people come back if we're giving them everything the first time around? You know, right? then we might as well just do one episode and then call it quits and say, here it is. Here's the full, <laughs> the full Fifi and Dre story. Get it here. There you go. Um, and, and but we're not going to do it that way. So yeah. we're going to keep Unless it. Unless we'll be doing a documentary, then we should do it. Maybe we'll do it someday. We should someday. Yes, we do have many stories, man. I mean, the, the one from Baden Baden, we always make home. Alone is pretty good. I mean, all of them are pretty good. I think there is there is a possibility to share many, but not now, not today, I would say. Can you, in like four to five sentences, give us the we always make it home story? Because I think it's good background for our friendship and why we're doing this podcast together and the kind of right. shenanigans that we get into or have gotten into in the past. But like short, keep it short for fuck's sake, okay. Felipe. Just keep it short, all right? Don't go into this long out. round. It's very hard for me to summarize things because I can talk way too much. And I'm, I'm, okay. I'm specifically saying this because I know this, trop this topic triggers you. All right. It's like it's like an emotional thing. And, and once you get on that roller coaster, it's hard to get you off. Mm -hmm. So just keep it short, keep it unemotional, just very mm -hmm. matter of that's fact, that's what happened. Right, I'll give it a try. So we were uh, many years ago in Baden-Baden, south of Karlsruhe or next to Karlsruhe. We went to party there, but unfortunately, we kind of got lost from the people we went with. So we struggled to come back home and we had to walk quite a distance to go back to the main station. Uh, it was night, dark, cold, and we were pretty tired. So at some point, you just saw some bushes and you said, you know what, we're going to sleep in here. Felipe, I'm just going to take a nap and then we go tomorrow. And I said, Andrew, no, I'm not going to sleep in here. I'm not going to leave you alone in here. And we always make home. We always make it. No matter what, we always manage. And, of course, we manage. So that is a very short summary of the story. You did an incredible job and it just oozes inspiration, that story, I think, you know, about right. life lessons. Exactly. We somehow motivated ourselves to get out of that situation and finish our goal that was to reach the main station and make home in the end of the day. And, so you know, it's a good segue into our topic because I'll tell you what, um, that day, that night, I was perfectly happy sleeping in those bushes, Felipe, to be honest with you. I would have I had a great, I saw it very well. great sleep. Um, I would have had some privacy. Like I wouldn't have gotten like mugged or raped or anything because I was a little bit off to the side and, and would have been protected by leaves and foliage. And uh, have to, like, I mean, maybe, maybe it would have been the situation like I'm, I'm lying uh, like behind a bush and then like this always happened when I played paintball. I would hide behind something and then like a third of my body would still be looking out because I'm just so long, I'm two meters <laughs> long. So I think maybe that would have uh, been been a possibility. Yeah, that but I was perfectly great. happy, Felipe, to sleep in that bush. So really what what was there was, first of all, a clashing of, of goals, right? My goal was to sleep, to rest. And your goal was to somehow make it home and, 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 and to that end position right so my goal was like a state of mind i want rest i want comfort you know i've had a long day i just want to rest and, and just i don't care about what happens down, now. right i don't care where it is i'm perfectly happy i'm just living life but it, this is what i want in life right now right just to come down and relax and wherever wherever it be right but your goal was to make it home and i don't know know why necessarily that that goal of home maybe you oh, can always you have it about that. home why was home such a big deal that For me, Always making home is very important because technically home is where you're safe, is where you made it. So 
if you do all the shit that you gotta do on the streets, but you made home, means that somehow you still are in a position to guide yourself back to safety. So for me, it's very important because of the psychological aspect that if I went out, I should always be able to make home. Well, unless you find something better to sleep on, but definitely not the pushes. Uh, so you gotta come home. Uh, for me, it's something that if you're not home, then you didn't achieve this, this goal and you can be in a dangerous situation. So you didn't hand yourself well enough. Uh, and I dislike that. And when you are home, there's also the sensation that you can wake up whenever the hell you want the next day. You are technically safe. Uh, you have hopefully water if you're thirsty. If you're a hangover, you can wake up and go back to sleep again. But if you wake up in the middle of the morning, the bush is in the freaking bottom, bottom with people passing by and say, what the fuck is that? Uh, I don't think there'll be such a pleasant in waking up. And for me, they don't. Baden Baden is nice. Baden Baden is nice, man. But not if those weren't just some random thorny bushes. Those were like curated, very nice, comfortable. They didn't look very cozy. I'll give you that. I think there's a difference between like uh, falling asleep, like in in Neukölln on on this on a busy street in the middle of Berlin, or like in a, a secluded area in Baden Baden, which is just full of rich old people. And wells and and, and, yeah, and like, there was no options for me. That was literally not an offer for me that night. And uh, my only problem for me for me was like, how do I convince or motivate Andrea to get out of the floor? Because you were already laying down. I don't know if you remember. You were kind of gone. I was. I was like, I found my bush <laughs> that night. I found my bush. I knew where I was gonna yeah. rest my head for that night. You, and you, I, I really have to reiterate, like, and I think this is interesting, and this is how we'll we'll move on to the to our topic for the day, right? Because what was what's really interesting is that I was perfectly happy to lie down in that bush and to wake up the next morning in Baden Baden and you know maybe go get a croissant at the bakery around the corner. That was that was perfectly uh, um, possible for me um, as a vision for how I wanted to spend that night. You know, so there was really no internal drive for me to to make it home. So you had a very strong internal drive. I had a non-existent internal drive, but somehow you managed to convince me because you know what? We, we, we both made it home that yeah. night. Thank and, you. you know, I hate to say it, but it was because of you that that happened. And I'm not going to give you the satisfaction of saying that, you know, I would have been mugged or something bad would have happened to me and that you, you saved my life potentially that night. I'm not going to give you that. That's a bit of a- You don't have to, man. The fact that you know about it is enough for me because I can see in your eyes. I see that you know it. I'm not as much grateful for that night because, you know, maybe something better would have happened with my life if I slept in that but bush. Like maybe maybe somebody would have come by and yes. an opportunity for my life would have come up that, you know, I'd be in a different position today. And, and maybe you took maybe that I from me. Maybe I robbed you of the woman of your life. Maybe a beautiful Russian chick will pass by where you sleep and say, oh my God, you look so cold. Can There's I a lot of those in Baden Baden. So now that you put it that way, I'm starting to slowly <laughs> trend in that direction. But let's get back to the actual point and, and you know, Sorry, I had no motivation to go home that night. You had all the motivation in the world to go home that night. How did you convince me? And why did you think it was important to convince me? Honestly, to I actually wanted to ask you how I did it because I don't remember exactly. But for me, it was very important. One thing, very important to go home. Uh, for me, I have this thing. I always make home. I always make home because it means that I managed to drink as much as I want, to do all the shit that I want to do, but it was at least in a state of mind where I could still make home uh, unless there was a decision not going home and uh, there is no way I would leave you there alone no fucking way I'm gonna leave a friend sleeping on the streets alone not a chance even more after a night of drinking so for me it was too obvious I would never leave you alone there so I have only one chance if I want to achieve my goal that is make home I had to motivate you and convince you somehow to get out of the very cozy bushes Get up your ass, walk another few kilometers all the way to the main station, wait there for another train so you could go all the way to Kazuo. And It was an uh, odyssey, man. It was such an odyssey. It was it was a lot yeah. of energy that we both didn't have that was needed in order Not to at all. I still don't know how he made it. I'm just glad he did it. I think the word impossible fits perfectly here. I think there was something impossible that that day we yes. made possible. The definition of Mission Impossible. I think Tom Cruise should use our episode there to make the proper Mission Impossible, a good one for, 
for kicks. So let's not go down the slope of associating ourselves with Tom Cruise in oh, general. Yeah. But Mission Impossible, I'm with you. Um, we made the impossible possible that night. And, and really, it comes down to, I think, your motivational skills that day. And even though maybe that day was a mystery of how you did it, I think in general, there's a lesson to be learned from that story, right? That, that with motivation, maybe anything can be achieved. True, exactly. Uh, or, or, or without saying that, like, as a 100% fact, you know, maybe that's something we can talk about today. Is, is motivation what's missing in order to achieve mm -hmm. your goals? And yeah, so let's keep the mystery of that story alive. You know, uh, I was in the bushes and, and some, some words were spoken, some kind of situation took place uh -huh. uh, that led to us both moving in the direction of the Bahnhof and ultimately um, resting you. our heads in our own beds that night. Whether or not that's good, right? Like I so still stick to the fact that there could have been things in my life that basically you took from me. <laughs> possibility and opportunity man, I could have had. I don't have it, nobody else has it. <laughs> and I think possibly now that we talk about this again and we kind of recap that that story, maybe there was a different level of motivation there too, of, of jealousy and these kind of things, of, of thinking down down the line, like maybe Andre can wake up the next day and, and, and uh, get opportunities that maybe I deserved. And I would Let rather neither of us get those opportunities <laughs> than Andre. Uh, so who knows? Now, now Not that we bring that up, it's way. it's it's a touchy touchy story. But what do you want to talk about, Felipe? Because you introduced this topic in our pre-discussions as, as yeah. something that was really on your mind. And uh, we don't we don't just want to talk crap um, mm -hmm. on this podcast. We also want to give a couple of, of gems and nuggets along the way about uh you know certain topics and and uh the, the things yeah, that we've learned along the way right not entertained only with bullshit and funny stuff but some good content which is surrounded with funny and interesting things exactly heart and the mind yes you want them both involved and i'd like to add even the soul i think those are the three key components you have to Shut up, man. You don't know what I'm talking about. One day I'll bring you to more the spiritual side. You understand it. But it doesn't have to be now and today. I am motivated. I to would argue that I'm more spiritual than you, but let us leave the soul out of it for today, Felipe. I think okay. heart and mind is enough. Soul, it's overload, Felipe. I can guarantee, but I guarantee you that I'll try my best. Let's keep it simple. Today, right? the whole thing's connected one of the other. We are just one person who uses. Well, let's see if we get to it. Let's not Correct. put it on the agenda, but let's see if we get to it. Fair enough. If okay. it gradually leads there, let's say if the universe, aka Felipe, leads the conversation there, then uh, we'll see. We're talking about motivation and not the universe. Okay. So now that I've been motivated to talk about motivation, so why did I think it was a good topic? First of all, we all need motivators all the time in our life. Doesn't matter if it's so we can get out of bed and go to work or go to study or do not get out of bed and do something else. We are constantly struggling in life in having to do things that we do not want to do, but they might be very important to ourselves or to society in some aspects. So um, I left my country, I left Brazil relatively young and I came to Germany I would say to live alone. I was very blessed that I always surrounded by very good people. But when you are alone at such a young age, you need to be able to motivate yourself to go through all those problems uh, that you're facing that you never faced before. Because you're living with your parents. I didn't even do laundry. You don't do almost anything. You get things done. So you don't really have to pass through all the shitty things to do when you're completely taking care of yourself. Uh, and sometimes it's hard to motivate yourself or even something that is challenging, things you want uh, to achieve. For example, moving to Germany was very tough. Uh, it's a very shocking difference of cultures that I had. Uh, what was your motivation for moving to Germany? Well, I always wanted to come to Germany because I always had this idea that I want to be among the best. And when I decided to go to engineering, I was young and dumb. Hey, man, the Germans are the best. We are the best. Now I can say that. Yeah, baby. We uh, are the best. Couldn't agree more. I mean, for engineering at least. Uh, so I wanted to do my doctorate in, in Germany after I was done with my uh, studium in Brazil. 
But because, you know, doctor, I'm young and dumb, and I thought it was a great thing to do. But nowadays, I know it's not for me. Anyway, so I have... Dr. Drummond. Yes. Oui, 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 oui. Um, so I had a problem with a, a professor in university in Brazil, which uh, put my studies in jeopardy in the, uh, in the country. So I had two options. One, I could go maybe to south of Brazil, where they also have very good universities. Or I could just take the risk and come to Germany and do my whole course in here uh, instead of just coming after my doctor. So the motivation was I want to achieve many things in my life and I really would like to learn from the best and to work with the best people. Because, uh, you know, the thing that some, someone said, I do not know who, try not to be the smartest person on the room. And for me, that means that try to be in a room or in a place where everybody adds something to the table, that you not only want feeding, there is like a two-way streets on that. So I always try to be in situations or positions where I'm surrounded with very good people who push me to be better and develop. And So uh, that's how you do it. Just, just one quick question for a bit. So that's how you do it when you're in a room, but how do you do it when you're not in a room, like you're outside? then I still try to select good people. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so if I'm outside the room, that's even easier because then I'm definitely not the smartest person in the universe or the planet. Because that's the thing. Like, if you're in a room, right, there's just a few people. And you may be part of them. People, yes. But if you're outside, technically, your room is the world and it's... <laughs> You're not the smartest person in the world, Felipe. No, no, no. You're, no, you're a clever guy, you know, but like, you're not the smartest. I, you know, I, you're I'm closer. not even, hey, closer, <laughs> but not, not, not quite there, but you know, so it plays a role about where you are and, and, and bullshit aside, like um, the, the factor of environment, right? Like also yeah. um, motivation really has a lot to do and, and reaching goals has a lot to do yeah. with your environment, right? So would you say that um, your environment changed a lot coming from Brazil to Germany? And did that have any kind of effect um, uh, on, on your motivation? Yes, definitely. Um, I agree with you completely. The environment completely changed the people because if you put one individual that's not very motivated on doing anything, but is surrounded by motivated people who's probably helping him out and helping him motivate, you get almost motivated by default. Uh, is this influence, this exchange of energy that we have as human beings. I think we all have this type of people who you are in a room and then this person comes inside and it's like the whole energy of the group was dragged by this person, it's gone away. So everybody's actually demotivated. Uh, mm. But you also probably met someone when everybody's very down, this person enters in the room and it just I immense positive energy and motivation and sometimes just say one or two things that were exactly what those people are needing to hear and that motivate them. So we are completely influenced by one another. So therefore we also influenced by the society or the environment among us. Uh, the thing that we have to learn is if we are in an environment who is not very fomenting uh, motivation and development, we have to be that person to enter in the room and change the game. Well, is that, that, that the old saying? You gotta be the change. You start changing the world. The change starts on you. So if you come and then you change the people, you change the room, so meaning that definitely your environment influence acts completely in your motivation and how you achieve your goals and how you see in your life and the projects they wanna have in your life. So I fully I'm so impressed, Felipe. You're you're so prepared today with these sayings and these quotes and and everything. My mind is crazy. Very much, very uh, much. I prepared. did a very very hard work preparing. I wrote three things down here, and uh, I'm ready from the preparation scheme, man. That's why I'm German nowadays. It did rub off on you, a lot. And yeah, I mean, uh, I resonate because you, you're talking about uh, moving to Germany to study with the best. And uh, as a German, I understand that we are the best and you did come to study with us and now you are better for it. And I think that that shows that you achieved your goal that, that you, you came with as your original motivation. And uh, yeah, I mean, with engineering, it really is Germans are the best. Let's be real, right? Like in a lot of things, we, we think we're the best, but we're not. But yeah. that, let's be real. Yeah, we, we pretty much have that. Arts, 
I don't know. Maybe it's not the best place in the world to design. Maybe Spain, Italy is kind of nice. There's a lot of things we're not the best in the world for. Yeah. But engineering, yeah, I'm sorry, everyone else. Jammers are jammers. Yeah. I mean, look at the cars. Look and at the like cars. It, but Ferrari is great. German car works. That's the difference. They work. Right, they function. They move from A to B, and that's what the cars are there for. Exactly. So that's the general mentality. Let's be efficient so really get... and effective. So let's be quick and let's work correctly. I mean, not always. Right. Mostly. Right. Yeah. So yeah, that was that was the most motivation that I come to Germany. And when I came here in Germany, my main motivation to succeed was along the fact that I am a very driven person who set my own goals and want to achieve them. Um, I always want to not disappoint my family, of course, and um, it was not exactly an easy financial adventure for my, my parents to support me in the first six months. Um, I am very glad that I managed to get a scholarship afterwards, and that's why I, I managed to stay here for quite some time, but financially speaking, it was not an easy thing for my parents to support me here. So I had as well this extra motivation that if my parents are passing through some struggles and really investing on me, uh, I cannot disappoint them. And I need to achieve the goals that I want to achieve. And by achieving the goals, I'm not saying I need to graduate. By achieving the goals means that I'm not gonna give up on the first try. I'm not just gonna let little problems affect my discernment. And very important, I will have enough clarity to take the decisions that I think is the best for my life, regardless is that what society told me or not. Uh, I was very blessed with my both parents. They always give me this idea, this critical thinking, and um, as well this concept that analyze the situation, see things, and then you act. Um, I'm not quite sure if they did that, knowing how, uh, knowing how they did that to me, because they don't always do that, unfortunately. Uh, but there was something that drove me very strongly uh, towards achieving the goals. And one of them was the graduation, which I achieved, but as well being able to do not let society completely guide me. I mean, by guide, no, but tell me where to go. Mm. I feel like I'm a person who nowadays had the discernment to go and ask myself where do I want to go. And then I try to see how to not clash against society how to go with society towards that uh, decision that I have. So mm. those were things that motivated me a lot. Uh, when that's, I that in, that's that intrinsic motivation, huh? Yes. That stuff from the inside. Yes, it's, uh, my motivation is never, um, you gotta do it because someone told you, I like because either the challenge or because I see the purpose of things. Um, if I go a little bit more into also the business area. So I did some coaching, I did trainings, um, I do have some knowledge in guiding people or leading people. I did a lot of project management. So, so I want to stop you there because I think you're, you're getting a step beyond because um, this uh, intrinsic thing, I think is just, let's spend a little bit of time on it because I have an interesting perspective on, on that that is in a way completely different. Like you're talking about a strong foundation of intrinsic motivation, the drive that you have yourself to go out and do things and not really letting society guide you and uh, external motivations to, to, to decide what, what your path is going to be. And I find that interesting because the first part of my life was completely opposite of that. It was completely externally driven. It was completely just going down the path of what society um, has, has laid before me. And it's interesting because I don't think I really had any kind of intrinsic motivation on a level of like, what do I want to do with my life or my career? Like I would say I was intrinsically motivated to do certain things. Like I was always intrinsically motivated to play basketball, you know, like I love that. And I had to tell you anything. Just go. Nobody had to tell me there was no reward necessary for me yeah. to go out and play ball, you know, so that well, that's something that I had an internal drive for. So I wouldn't say I was completely without my internal motivations. But in general, when it came to like that like general overarching life path that we all kind of go down, right? You go through the school and then what's the next step and where do I move and what do I kind of choose as a career path? Um, I, I really just kind of took what was laid out in front of me, the next thing laid out by somebody else in front of me and just took it and moved on. So even when I came to university in the beginning, I was just really studying to pass an exam to move mm -hmm. on to the next one. And, and there was no really... And I noticed this really early, like most people like you and, and my other friends who I was studying with, 
really had a, a strong interest in engineering and had that internal kind of thirst for knowledge and, and understanding what's going on. And I kind it of found myself just like to go to engineering. Huh? Not something that happened. It was a decision that to go to engineering. Yeah. You chose engineering because you wanted to learn about engineering. I chose engineering because I was good in school at math and science. Because you're German. And Germans when do not know what to do. They do No, it's not a German thing. It's not a German thing. It's it's not a German thing. It's a thing of um I I had a youth where I didn't really have a lot of opportunities to uh, uh, make my own experiences. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like it was always even just moving from country to country. I was always taken along for the ride. Mm -hmm. And until I was in my early 20s, I was just kind of taken along for the ride. And it was always just the next ride. Like I was at school and then university and just keep going on for the next ride. Until at some point it kind of clicked for me towards the end of my first degree when I was in my early 20s. Like, hold on, like what would happen if I started doing it differently and started kind of forging my own path. And it was a really interesting process because I remember very vividly that switch and how it happened. And that sh shift is like fundamental to, to my life story now. I mean, you know what I've, I've been doing the last couple of years, we'll get into it, but all of that is really, the starting point is that shift from that external motivation to that intrinsic motivation and, and and harnessing that like I didn't even have any you know like I didn't have the capabilities of it like I didn't even know what what it requires you know and honestly I started from scratch I started from what do I even like what do I even enjoy doing you know asking something is fundamental and imagine a 21 year old person for the first time in his life really asking himself what do I enjoy what do I want to do and that's really vivid in me and that's something that I think kind of stands in contrast to what you said, like you have a little bit more of a background where, yeah. where that, that intrinsic side of it was a little yeah. bit developed earlier on. Uh, and for me, it was, it was pretty much the opposite. And I didn't experience that until I was in my early twenties. Yeah. I was, I was a bit of like a little devil when I was a kid and um, I have There's a big problem. With the yeah, let's not tell that out loud. Uh, my I mother, did. Yeah. An angel. even it's though I was a devil, who knows? And it's the truth. Um, yeah, yeah. No, I'm a, devil's I'm not a devil. bad thing, you know. Like the devil, devil no, like I, Satan I, in I, South I, Park. He, he becomes I, part of the gang and he hangs out. Like devil is like it's such a stereotype that a devil is a bad thing. So I don't agree. take it the wrong way. There are some good sides. <laughs> but no, you're very devilish. Look in a great way. Thanks. Very so devilish. Anyway, um, so what I was trying to say uh, is that I I have a problem with uh, hierarchy to start with. Um, it's with not what? because hierarchy. Is that correctly pronounced? Hier hierarchy. Hierarchy. Here are uh, hierarchy. Fuck yourself, brother. Uh, so no, I, listen, I, I Felipe, you well with Sometimes we have to. Sometimes I have to be um, the guy who says, "Hold on, will everybody understand your accent?" <laughs> Certain <laughs> words, okay. The and Dre podcast we had in the beginning. You had Dre, Drew, Dre. Okay, it's okay, but you know, at some point, if we're gonna make a point, a serious point, we need the words to, to be solid. So, I'll try to pull myself a little, not to sell you exactly what I would like to. I'm not gonna correct you by saying the right one. I'm just right. gonna visualize it, right? So the hierarchy. All right. What about authority? Respect my authority. All right. There you go. I get perfect. It. So I had problems with authority. I always had since I was a kid. Uh, so if you just tell me to do things, I never really just accept it. And I'm like, why, why do I need to do that? Because I'm lazy as well. So I don't want to do things. So I need to know why it's so important that I have to do that. It's not that I am that important, but I am that lazy. So, uh, I always challenge a lot. And my poor mother challenged her very, 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 way too many times indeed. Uh, but that also brought me this, this thing of, first of all, asking why, and then getting motivated by the purpose. Uh, and that comes intrinsic and the internal motivating. All right, fuck, I need to do that. Otherwise they're gonna smack me. Or I need to do that so I don't get grounded, yes. So, you know, I start finding the ways of motivating myself. But I think since I, my personality is that I do not just do things because people told me to. I need to see the big picture. Like, why should I do that? And why should I do that in that way? Uh, and I think that's why since the beginning, I had to motivate myself to do things that I didn't want to, because someone just tell me to do it. It's not enough motivation for me. You say, if you don't do it, you go grounded. I was my whole life grounded the whole time. 
Uh, you have no idea. My, the normal for me was to be grounded and not not grounded. It's like it's normal to be in the school, not in the class, but get kicked out of class. Um, but in it, I think that devilish types do right. They get kicked out of classes and yes, I, raucous. I was in the principal's office pretty much every day. Yeah. She was a great lady, though. I mean, all the principals that I had were all great. I have nothing. I think that to summarizes that. you well, Felipe. I think that's a good little anecdote to describe your personality. You're the yes. one who always got sent to the principal's office, but then you also became friends with the principal. Yes, right? so exactly. They used to like make me. the best I of the situation. Yes, and that's opportunistic, and that has a lot to do with this topic of motivation as well, right? And I think something that's really interesting that you mentioned is, I would say that both of us are. I don't like the word lazy. I wouldn't say we're both lazy. Okay, because I know real lazy people and we're not that, right? We're not just sitting on our asses comfortable and, and, and right. Like, that's true just laziness, like right? Efficient and only do things that are very necessary. We're comfortable. We like to be comfortable, right? Like not, not, not saying that like, we'll get into the whole thing of like comfort zones, right? But we, we, like, we like it comfortable, right? So if, if we, we're gonna have to spend a lot of energy to do something, we at least want to know that that energy is being put in yeah. the right things, which I think is a great way to look at it, right? Because and it makes us, it's a very engineering kind of way of doing yes. things. If you think about it, right? Like we exactly. we're yeah. so comfortable that we're, we're radically evaluating where our energy is spent, yes. right? And then that energy has to be spent in a way that it has maximum for like outcome, it, yes. the outcome is maximized, it right? Is so then it's, it's best benefit, the maximum benefit. Yes. Yeah. And I think that like, basically that's how i got my degree right and i think that's how you got your degree too right like minimal effort to just pass the exam and get through and 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 do the basics because there was really no need to spend more energy into it right no. um so we just did what was necessary in order to reach that goal and, and i think really a big part of motivation is also the goal we set right so i think a lot of young people studying put themselves under a lot of pressure because they want to get a good grade in every exam and they think this this overall grade that they're going to get at the end is, is a big deal and so on. And, and nobody really ever tells them that it doesn't matter at the end. It's just the degree that, that matters. Job, but they, they put that pressure on themselves because their goal is every time I take a, a, an exam, I need it to go well. And we took that pressure from ourselves by just saying, well, all we really need to do is pass. And how can we get there in the most efficient way? And I think it's really interesting because I think we didn't get there by being lazy. We got there by being, uh, by, through collaboration. Yes. Like I think, I yes. think the social environment that we created around ourselves was was really um, optimal for us to 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 slack off in a way, like to to start studying late, to not really give a fuck about like studying everything. I think we really tried to get like 40, 50 percent of the content most of the time, and then we were happy with that, or just repetition of exam questions because an engineering degree is very like calculation based uh, questions right so there's there's a lot of repetition you can just do and we succeeded like really like we we did really well that way and i think that i find myself nowadays in in my career doing that all the time like really saying like how can i make the most of this like half an hour i have for this one topic how can i how can i motivate myself to make the most out of that half an hour and then this is what I always find interesting as well, is that the motivation is enough to get me basically sitting down, but it's not enough to get me through the whole thing, right? So is motivation enough? And I think that um, our engineering degree shows that you need more than motivation because we weren't particularly motivated to pass those exams, but we did it, right? Oh, we did it and we got through it. it. Yes, I saw the scholarship student. I had to pass, otherwise I'll lose it. Although but you, pass your motivation wasn't to pass like like the exam itself, you know, or the content of the exam. It was that that bigger goal. Yeah, yeah. Get, right. Yeah. And so motivation alone is not going to gonna get you. The there. job that I want to do in the future, that's always been my goal, to get the knowledge. The passing is it's normally inherit from the knowledge that you obtain, but my goal has always been all right. I see the applicability and the usability of that. I want to learn it because in the future when I go to to work, I will gonna need it. And that's, for example, there's some subject that I did actually pretty well, but most subjects I kind of 4.0, 3.0, or something like that. And it was enough. But I mean, even yeah. that is a success, right? So yeah. it's interesting, like that motivation thing is really like, uh, it's really interesting to think about my university days and think about what role motivation played. 
because if you look at it kind of like overarching, like if I, if somebody was observing me in a dome and how I was acting on a daily basis, you would think I wasn't even motivated to do my degree. I didn't give a shit about it, right? But there was motivations, like you said, like my motivation was maybe more so to pick and choose what I want to learn and develop myself exactly. rather than just kind of become this picture of an engineer that, that others had. Yeah. I think we, we are rebels against the system, Andre. That is the point. Because we are pretty rebels, dude. Yes. Yeah. Rebels, rebels with a cause, man. Rebels with a cause. Yes, exactly. What is your cause, for Felipe? What motivates you today to do what you do? And you do you do great things, sir. You do great things. And 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 you definitely are somebody who I would say in general has the possibility to motivate himself. Yep. It's something that self-defined goals I right think, so both of it is intrinsic yeah how do you do it and why do you do it um i think anyone who needs to motivate people they need to know how to motivate themselves alone because uh at the end of the day to motivate people it's you got to be a little bit of a leader you have to show them uh some purpose you have to show them look that is what we want to achieve we're going to achieve through this way. And that's why I will need you to do something. So I think to be able to motivate people, you need to know how to motivate yourself. And um, that counts either you were born with that. I think there are people who were just born with that. Or you pass through so many situations where you were forced into having to figure out how to motivate people. And um, I think I kind of had both in my life because as a, I like people in generally, um, I lost my faith in humanity many years ago, but I like people. I, I can't help myself. I enjoy helping people. I enjoy getting to know people. I am literally curious about people. One of the things that nowadays and comes to mind, like if I wouldn't have studied mechanical engineering, which I very glad that I did, even though I'm not a mechanical engineer per se, but what would I do? And honestly, nowadays, I think I'll be a psychologist concentrating in behavior. Psych uh, psychology, behavior, behavior, psychology, whatever the hell you call, uh, because I think the human brain, yes, even better, the human brain, people's per se, is so freaking interesting. If you get to know someone's story, you can already foresee their reactions for some things based just on how they live, how are the relationship with the parents, how are they with the friends. So the human being really interests me, even though I think that we all pretty fucked up. So, mm. Amen, brother. Right. So mm -hmm. the fact that I oh, like fun. human beings and uh, I was in situations that I like sports a lot and sports, you always need some type of a captain or a leader to push the team in the field. And I come from a family who is very leading oriented, who is also very sports oriented, who always mm -hmm. built up, uh, at least in me and my brothers, um, that we should be leaders. We should try to help people. And, you know, if you have a situation that nobody wants to take the responsibility, go there and help everyone else. So I mm. think it helped me how I was raised. I think my personality per se already helps. And uh, the situations that I was in my life, which has been a very crazy adventure so far, put me in places where I didn't have much power or direct power towards people, but I still needed to motivate people to get some things done. So the work could get done regardless of university or work-wise. And I think that developed exactly in me this possibility to, first of all, be able to motivate myself and try to motivate other people. And very important, continuous motivation. Because motivation is not a thing that you do once. You have to yeah. every day motivate yourself to keep on going, kill that lion. That's it, man. That you gotta awesome. do. Yes, exactly. It's an everyday hustle. It's an everyday, everyday hustle. hustle. You gotta find. And sometimes we struggle. Sometimes we're never gonna manage. I have days that I don't wanna get out of bed. Even more when it's winter here, it's freaking gray and it's rainy, and you are under the blankets. It's so cozy. I don't wanna move. They're so hard to motivate me. Even to go to shower is already hard to motivate. So we all struggle with that. But I think if you pass through so many opportunities, you start to find things. And one of the most important things is know the purpose, why you have to do that activity, what is leading you, what is forcing you to do it. And that is something that I talk to people a lot, that we do not put enough efforts on setting goals, setting things that we want to achieve, because we need a purpose. Why are you working? Why are you doing this job? Why are you helping this person? If you don't yeah. have a purpose, it's very hard. 
But if you mm-hmm. do, it gets you motivated, it gets you going, and motivates you to go and go. And so to keep the motivation, the purpose there. So, you know, these visual things have somehow the thing that you want to achieve looking at you. So it forces you to go. So I think motivation at the end of the day, again, is not a one thing, it's a process that you're kind of doing constantly. And the thing behind motivation is a purpose. Like why, 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 why I'm doing that? One of the things that I always use is we all who worked, even more in office, we all have some freaking reports that we got to fulfill. And only God knows why we're doing that shit. And we are completely demotivated to do it. We might sometimes get depressed, we're pissed off. Why? Nobody tells you why you're doing that. Not to do, do that, do this report and give me my desk by Friday. But nobody tells you, look, please fulfill this report. Because based on the information, this report, we're going to be able to set up the strategic direction for this company. So the whole company kind of depends on this type of reports. And we have a lot of that in the company. It's just the bosses lack the leadership to tell people why are they doing that in order to be able to motivate them, uh, not because they have to do it because they're paid to do it, but they are going to do it because they wanted to do it because they see how important it is to be done. And from my perspective- so That's already F- Felipe, Felipe tip number one of the day. In order to motivate others, give them more purpose, more background Explain about the their life. tasks, however medial they may be, put the, put the connection in. And, and you know, um, once I had my, my so-called awakening of like uh, shifting from extrinsic to intrinsic motivation, that's something that I really tapped into, that why, right? I really got mm-hmm. kind of- um, obsessed with with finding out the whys of things you know like even happen? honest huh when did this switch happen i mean okay i think like to- my 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 last one or two years in card school I, I think i was like 21 it was 2011 like uh around that time and it was a very conscious thing where i like i said like it started with like hold on what do i even enjoy like what do i of all the things i'm spending my time on or maybe not spending my time on like what do I want to do? What do I enjoy? Like just me, right? Like not like thinking about, okay, what music do I listen to when I'm with this certain group of and people? Why? And something as simple as that, right? Like what's music that I want to listen to right. when I'm by myself, right? And before I was a little bit more driven by like, I really like this song. It's like a stupid example, but I really like this song. But a lot of people that I hang out with uh, think it's corny or bullshit. And so I won't mention that I like this song. Mm. I'll kind of keep that oh, a bit that happens with everyone. Everyone, everyone exactly exactly but really the, the the awakening so to say was was kind of like that moment of realization of like it really doesn't matter who gives a fuck if i say i like this song and whoever reacts in whatever way doesn't fucking matter and that was a really fuck them if they don't of, like you don't have to listen exactly to them. fuck them but that it's a simple thing to say but it's a very difficult thing for a human do. being to yes. kind of do and and internalize and like get like you said like you have this this brain which is this incredible organ but at the same time it's a very stubborn organ like we're very much kind of um uh trapped in how we do things lately yep. and it takes a lot of effort and energy uh in order to to make changes in that i think that's what what's also difficult about a topic like motivation right it's very simple on paper how do you motivate yourself yeah but to actually do it is difficult and that has a lot to do with the fact that you know our brain is then so is wired in a certain way so my brain was wired for my entire formative life of just basically waiting for somebody to hand me the next step yeah. this is what you should do next but at the same time being like hold on i don't resonate with this but fuck it i'll just continue doing it and at some point and that was that time around mm-hmm. 2011 when i was about 21 where i said like hold on i'm not willing to do it anymore now there's this rising um feeling of like fuck that i'm not gonna do that i'm gonna do this instead and oh you don't think it's the right way for me but hold on what criteria are you basing that on Mm -hmm. and i started realizing that the people who i was letting kind of decide and guide my life really didn't have my personal best interest for my life and that's not to say somebody like my father who has is from his point of view my best interest of you know setting up a good life for myself financially Mm -hmm. and whatnot um, that, you know, I, I'm not saying that, that he was misguided. I'm, he, he, he thought he was doing yes. the best for me mm-hmm. in that sense. But I had to understand that what his version of the best for me exactly. uh, was, is, was different than my version of the best yeah. for me. And he which could, one do I follow now? 
he told right? you what would be good for him, for what he thinks that would make sense in his perspective. But yeah. what most people fail, well, 90% of people, like we almost fail, is to really try to see the things that what Andre aims in life and wants to achieve in life. And based on that, then you can say what's the best thing for him and not like based on me, what I think. And that's it, Matt. And, and I think that ties into like empathy, right? So putting yeah. yourself in somebody else's shoes and, and, and understanding them, right? So that, that I think is, is a big part of, and you talked about, you kind of differentiated uh, motivation into two types, right? So the, motiv the, the, the motivating yourself, how do I motivate myself? And then the motivating of others, right? So those are kind of the two categories. And I think that that motivating of others is really dependent on empathy because how are you going to motivate someone to do something when you can't it. even imagine what position they're in. Like the, for, for me to bring in a little bit of my preparation, because I didn't waste my time either, Felipe. I, I, I made some thoughts. I wrote down some things, which is not true, but you know, in my mind, I, I, I noted some things. And, you know, one of the things with motivation is that you have to, to want to, to do it yourself, right? So if you're going to motivate somebody else, basically it's it's you're not just getting them to understand why they're doing it you also have to help them build their own drive and yeah. it's not something you can give them here's your drive because what drives you will almost yeah. always not be the same drive for another person yeah. um as similar as it possibly may be it's going to have to be different because there's another person and another it's so complex human beings and our environment person's drive is going to be different even though it may have similarities so how do you Kind of help that person build that drive themselves and that's the tough part man and then you know as i went down this life path um, um of of looking at what motivates me to bring it in man i know i was against it but the soul it really comes down a lot to the soul man because what 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 i realized was what i like to do comes down to what's good for the soul Yep. right what is something that br fills me with energy exactly to fill my tank again because it's like yeah we're like a car right like you yeah. have that energy and it's not just coming from food but you have that energy and then you use it and then unless you put more gas in the tank anyway uh then you're not going to be able to continue but i think what's really amazing about human beings is it's not just food that's the energy you know yeah. so we can we can have a thought that can motivate us, you know, and, and even look at us in this conversation, kind of starting off a little bit slow, a little bit mellow. Now we're both getting kind of heated and emotional into it and talking a bit louder and so on, you know, and it happens very naturally because that drive is building in us. Right. And I think that's fascinating, man, because both of us are now in a career on a career path where, where we have to find ways to kind of put that fire into people, people yes. to help them kind of, find meaning Get them uh, in meaning. things and and because you're not going to motivate somebody long term with intrinsic extrinsic factors you know reward is only going to take money you, you can give new position you can give anything that like message the ego but they're not sustainable and it's one of those things that you know like on facebook and those stereotypical albert einstein said these quotes and these different things you know uh that's always one of them right that's always yeah. one of them that it's not enough and Never. You read and it's gone. It's a continuous thing. That's what's so important, you know? So you have to, like, you may be motivated today, but what's going to motivate you the next day? And uh, interestingly enough, I wrote my thesis on um, learning in general, how do human beings learn, um, and looking at the psychology of it, uh, which I'd love to get into sometime as well, Felipe. But it's the topic of motivation. I reread my motivation chapter, and it's really, really fascinating because besides the extrinsic intrinsic there's another big difference that we have to look at the question is is motivation enough for you to achieve your goals and science says no science says no it's not enough because motivation is only going to give you the the drive to act right it's going to put that fire in you but it's not enough to carry you through the actions you have to put you have to connect the motivation with the action of actually doing it and that is called volition volition right so volition is the perseverance the mm -hmm. hustle of it continuous con continuous grinding away at a goal because i mean the bigger the goal the more kind of the, yes. the, the more you gotta put in 
you can't just do a short term thing and, and get a big goal, right? Like you have to put in the work in order to build up to a bigger goal. And really motivation is not enough. And I find that fucking fascinating because everywhere you look, there's pep talks on motivation. And I think people in general nowadays have less and less problems motivating themselves. I but see a lot of really motivated people, mm -hmm. but the perseverance ain't there yet, man. And I, that's really, that's what I'm noticing a lot. A lot of people have that motivation. They watch those Tony Robbins videos yes. or whatever, you know, they get all pumped up and amped and I'm ready to go, man. Way too much, by the way. Like New Year's resolutions, right? People get all pumped up and ready to go. And then for two days, yeah. look, man, what you say is great. And um, so how can I put it? Because, you know, my parents might see that at some point um again i've been blessed with great parents and um ah, fuck how can i put that in a good way uh say the wrong things man your parents are watching yeah i know Thank you. Your yes. hey mom and dad how you doing <laughs> now i feel like an indian guy Woo. thank you come again no, anyway that doesn't represent indian people no all right i'll call saga then later on there you go. But it is a funny uh, way to do it. And it totally represents Indian people. Okay. You, you definitely look Indian a lot. That's true. No question about it. I pride it. myself in that too. Yeah, you should. Of course. Look I have it. a turban. I should get it out next time. You should. I do have some Indian clothes here when I was at Saga's wedding. Anyway, we we'll have an uh, episode one day. Uh, all right. So what you have great parents. They blessed you. La -de -la -de -la -de. Don't say the wrong things. I agree. I'm trying to. It's very tough, though. Uh, what were you talking before? I just recapped it for you. <laughs> no, that was what I said. What did you say? What did you I'm say? I'm not going to recap 10 oh, minutes on, of what right. I said. Give me one little hint and then try to trigger everything. Okay. Because in the interest, shut up. In the interest, Perseverance. shut up and let me do it. Don't, ask, it me, don't ask me to I do it. it. I must very and much then interrupt me every time I try to start. And you know, all right, go. Okay. So, anyway. in the interest, exactly, in the interest of our listeners, to put it simply again, motivation is not enough for you to achieve your goals. All right. You're, you're not going to just get there by being motivated to do it, by having that drive to act. Yes. Because the missing right. ingredient is the action. It's the fucking action and it's such a simple idea, but it's really hard to do in real life. The action is what keeps people from achieving their goals. And I think really that's the missing ingredient here. It's not motivation. It's more so how do you do yourself, right? We have the same components. How do you act yourself? How do you build up that perseverance and that continuity? But really the, the real struggle, and you know, I'm a teacher these days, right? So I went from engineering into teaching. And that's basically the job of a teacher is to do that for other people, right? So to get a child or a young person or sometimes even adults, right? Mm -hmm. to, 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 to set goals, to go first of all, just hard enough to, to define and set goals, but then also to motivate, yes, but to actually follow through. And believe it or not, the motivation isn't the hard part. It's the fucking following through. It's the everyday struggle and grind and perseverance of reaching your goals, which requires, as you said earlier, to tie it all together, mm -hmm. requires you to motivate and kind of inspire yourself on a daily basis to get that energy, right, in order to achieve your goals. And I think that whole thing that I just described is, is, is a strength of both of ours, luckily. Mm -hmm. Both of us are able to do that in a, in a pretty good way. And that's why we have a good chance of reaching our goals. And I think also what's cool is I think we have so much understanding of it because we both have jobs, you as a coach and me as a teacher, where we have to self-reflect about this all the time, right? Or we have so many experiences that show us, you know, that we may be good at this or this works or this doesn't work or so on of, of, of helping others with, with those uh, issues. Um, I think that we, we really have a good understanding of, of how to facilitate it for others, yeah. right? So I would say that we both have a pretty good understanding of how do we help somebody reach their goals, all encompassing the motivation and the volition of it. Yeah. Look, I think that perseverance for me, it's a, a daily motivation because perseverance is like to do, continue to do something that you believe in regardless of what's going on, which is very tough indeed. Um, regardless of what's going on man that's a good point too you need to, to really believe in the idea and then believe what you gotta do and what you're doing is the correct thing to be done and that's why you have to keep on going regardless of what's going on so for me perseverance is like gotta motivate yourself every day to go and keep that line 
Uh, I'm not here trying to tell people to kill lions. I'm just saying something that we say in Brazil. Uh, back in the day, in the tribes in Africa, when you don't they... even have lions in Brazil. Why do I you know, have... I know, but we still say it. Say it's about really lions. Chupacabras, always... or what do you have there? Like, uh, make it we more. We have the original. lions, or the lion from my team, Sport Recife. Yeah. Um, it also doesn't make sense that you have a crust of a lion, which you, you don't have lions. No, well, we have imaginary lions that are built in our imagination or in our own minds, which are their goals and achievements that we have to fulfill in that day. So my point is- So it's a metaphorical lion. No, it could be a real lion, depending on where you are and what you want to do. But I'm not trying here to say, people, go kill lions. No, I like lions. Don't go kill them, please. Keep them alive. They're pretty freaking cool. Anyway. Let's, let's get away from the lions. The lions are confusing me. Uh, they are great, but all right, let's go away from the line. So point is, perseverance is motivating yourself every day on obtaining or achieving what you want to achieve. And uh, as you said, it's continuity, this power to continue to motivate you every day to get out of bed and do the things that you got to do. That is where we always struggle. Every day. And um, I think there are some techniques to do it or to keep yourself uh, more motivated, but even if the day is... I think the self-learning is very important. You need to know yourself. There's something that you're saying before that I really like, I even wrote it down here, is know what you like. It's mm. incredible the amount of people that I talk to and I say, all right, you know what? You say, you do the things that you want to do because you don't have money. So let's say winning lotto now, a hundred million. What would you do? They get overwhelmed and they can mm. hardly tell them, oh, I would party. No, define party. Where would you go? Who would you party with? Mm. Can you really build up? Do you have that in your mind? Yes or no? And most people don't because then it goes back to what you were actually talking before. What happened to you in your age? You are kind of guided by society, or forced by society in this conformity, in this standard that to be happy, you need to go to school, then you go to the university, then you get a good job, and then you get a partner, you get uh, uh, well, a wife before a man. Well, let me rephrase it. A wife or a husband, regardless what your sexual orientation is, I don't care. Um, and that's the way to live your life and be happy, which fuck no. We all have different uh, things that we want, ambitions in life and things we want to achieve. Like, let me say my mother, you know, I'm 50% from my mother. She has a personality that she looks more for safety, more like very German way. She's more for safety, she's a very sweet woman. She loves studying. I am exactly the opposite. I love taking risks. I love adrenaline. I study not because I have fun doing it. I do it because I see the need of it to get the knowledge to understand situations. Um, so how can you tell me that I should live my life very similar as my mother should live her life if we have so many different ambitions and goals and pleasures from life? So I think the motivation, everything in your life start with, getting to know yourself better. If you know yourself better, then you see what would you like to achieve? And if you know what you like to achieve, then it's a lot easier to motivate yourself to go and do the job that you gotta do every day. But I'll tell you what, Felipe, this is, you know, at certain points, it sounded a bit like this, like cliche, just do this, just get to know yourself. It's all about the self understanding, you know? This is stuff you hear everywhere, right? Like it gets posted on Facebook every day. You know, this is what's important in life and so on. But so few people really do it, right? So few people really internalize it. And I think that's what's so interesting, right? We're both psychology geeks kind of, right? And want to understand why people do what they do. And I think that's so fascinating that like, it's so clear. People know what they have to do. They're just not capable of doing it on a daily basis. Yeah. So that I think is the really interesting part of when it comes to motivation is how do I motivate someone not just to have like the purpose and the drive, but to really the grind of it, right? How do I get them through the grind of it? And it's really striking with kids because they have no concept of grind and reward, right? Like once you've lived a bit of life, you know, I have to grind in order to achieve the big goals and get the big rewards. But as a child, you have no conception of that. So you're always basically making a choice in general in life, you're making a choice, right? Between instant gratification or some kind of gratification down the line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, you, right? you have like psychological exercises do that. that you, the, the kid, either you can have this cookie now 
Oh, you can have two cookies in 10 minutes. And most of the kids just go and eat the freaking cookie because they can't. And, 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 and you can do it with cookies, but you can also do it with math. Yes. Easily. Right. So like, what's, what's the point of learning this one math topic right now? If instead I could be um, having an awesome game of Call of Duty with my friends, which is way more fun and entertaining. And if life is about having fun and entertainment and having a good time, then that's definitely the clear yeah. choice for my life. Right. But there's, and that's, what's difficult is how do I communicate? You know, like how do I reach the, how do I relay this in this this information, this experience that go through the grind, build the little pieces up, and once you get an understanding and grasp of math to a certain level where where you can handle it and you can go deeper, it becomes self rewarding, and yeah. the reward you get from understanding and solving problems yeah. and connecting things and getting a yeah. better deeper connection to the world, which math really and science are a big uh, root, like it's a big way of us better understanding our place in the universe, the world, and all of these things, you know, all of that basically is connected to whether or not you can think mathematically and scientifically, which is foundationally starts at that point where that child is saying, nah, fuck it, I don't want to do this. I'm going to play Call of Duty instead, you know, but the only way they're going to get to that bigger, more meaningful, purpose-driven way of living is if they put in that grind. And that is my eternal struggle as a teacher mm -hmm. is to facilitate that process, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And one quick just lesson learned from there is you're not gonna convince anyone. And I think this is the key with motivation. You're not gonna convince anybody by just telling them things. And I think this is what is yeah. what's, what's missing. Yeah. People read all of these Facebook quotes and all of these cliche things and they think, oh, it's, it's, it's that simple, right? But what's missing and this is really the guiding force also in my career is creating experiences. I need the child to have an experience, which basically could mean I have to kind of not force them, right? But kind of push them against their will through a couple of stages before they get enough feedback from their own experiences to understand that there's more to this. So I'm, I'm, I'm almost kind of going, like pushing them against their own will um, in order to get to a point where only from there do they even have the possibility to get self-motivation. So that's what's really interesting to me, that there's such a big kind of like barrier in the beginning in order to get to the things that we're talking about. And I think the only way to get through that barrier is to help people by giving them experiences, by facilitating experiences where they can feel it. And ultimately on a very neurological, like scientific level, in order for their brain neurons to create new connections, right? So in order for their brain actually to expand the possibilities of how you think. And that's where it gets fascinating, man, because from motivation, now you're getting into like psychology and how how the brain works. You, you can't look at things separately. Awesome. Because it's all connected. It's all completely freaking connected. You cannot... Awesome. I say, for example, um, so I've been trying, so I've been in coaching uh, professionally and as well, let's say privately or like pro bono, you call whatever you want to call it. Um, and um, the point was, fuck, I kind of lost the train of thought a little bit. Mm. Uh, what did we just We're say? We're talking about Bono and how U2 is one of your favorite bands. And uh, yeah, it is, it is. It is very true. U2 is one yeah. of my favorite bands. Has always been. Oh, always been. It was about Bono. Uh, yeah, he used to sing very well. You're very pro you know, Bono, you said. You're very pro Bono. Pro. I should get my sunglasses here, so I should be a lot pro Bono. Yeah, I got what you did that. Uh, I'm trying to go a little bit before the pro Bono thing and what I wanted to say. Um, okay, I'll just start talking and I'm sure I'll figure out my way around it. So, is that how uh, you always do it? Yeah, well, most of it. It's like uh, Michael Fox a little bit. Ah, but today you were prepared. I oh, was, the I preparation. Write well. Yes. So the preparation only got you this far, huh? Yeah, apparently I have to write. Now you have to adapt, and now you, this is life for you, in a microcosm right here, man. Anyway, I should have only got you this far now. What about now? Uh, now, now it's okay. So um, what I always try to say to them uh, when I'm coaching, try to motivate people, helping them and keeping motivate themselves, uh, it's first of all, see what works for you and uh, use a few techniques as well. For example, I am a very visual person. Mm. So I need the thing looking at me. For example, if I have a problem to solve, then I kind of like print something that will remind me of the problem straight away. If I have something that I'm very pursuing in that I need this motivation every day, then I also have it looking at me. So the idea is if you have like this big thing that you wanted to achieve, 
uh, let's say it's something in a year, is only achievable in a year, six months. That is relatively a long time. So in this time in between, let's say in the six months of this whole year, it's very easy to lose track of this bigger picture of why you're doing that, your North Star. Yeah. So what you do, or at least what I would do, or my technique is I try to break this goal into smaller breaks. It's like engineering all over, man. Uh, I, honestly speaking, I steal a lot from engineering. Uh, mm. It's all about divide and conquer. So I get this main goal. I divide in smaller ones that are achievable in shorter period of times. And that gives you the sensation of success of yes, I achieved something. And this sensation alone motivates you to go further and further and further. It's like a snowball. And at the end of the day, what you're doing is a bit of a gamification, what the shitty activity that you gotta do. Because what is that game? Why the hell do we play campaign in games? Because in the end of the day, there's nothing. You know, okay, nowadays you can get rich with e-games, but let's say the ordinary people who are playing, what's the difference between playing campaign or playing random? The difference between campaign, you see development, you get more things. So you are growing as a character or whatever the hell are you doing? So that motivates you to go further. And yes, I wanna get more points. I wanna get more lives. So I wanna get more weapons. I want to develop my character. So this, this little development improvement that you have every day motivate you to go further and further and further. And that's exactly the same thing with real life. If you try to gamify a little bit of gamification, whatever the hell you say that, your real life that will help you to motivate you to do and to persevere in the end of the day. And uh, that's exactly what I try to do. I try to make games or I break the, the motive, my goal in small goals. So this success that I get reaching the first uh, deadline or the first goal that I have to motivate me to go to the second and the third and so on and so forth. And then there's no ball and suddenly, boop, you are teaching that goal. Felipe, you just motivated me right there with your your strong strong recovery, nice. complete blackout, not knowing what to say, and then coming up with those gems. That's that's motivation right there. My brain works in mysterious ways, man. Even I can understand it. That was amazing. That was Crazy. beautiful to watch and listen to. And I'll tell you what, man. That's that's a real uh, real nugget of a, a, a tip for people of of how how you can do it and I, I i do it the exact same way and i really think it is like engineering applied to life right yeah. you have a complex problem or a complex system how do you deal with it well at the end of the day the only way you can deal with it with anything in life is one fucking thing at a time so you just break it down into one thing at a time and honestly like for me something i started doing that really had a huge impact on my daily motivation right because you know, I have my own organization now and there's so much responsibility where it's like nobody's telling me I have to do things, yeah. but I know and I'm the only one who knows that this You're needs to be the only one done. who motivates you to do it. So there's I, I really can't rely on anyone else because nobody else even knows that this needs to be done oftentimes. So like I'm the only one who knows it. I'm the only one who's capable of doing it oftentimes. And so like it's all about me and, and getting myself up my, off my ass to do these things, you know, and. I, I struggle with the same thing that I think probably every human being struggles with. And that is when you think about your problems or your, your, uh, what you have to do during the day or whatever, you always kind of build it up, it becomes something bigger than it yeah, is. And you get that's overwhelmed. overwhelmed, right? And then you, you, you kind of envision it as being more complicated yes. than it is. And I, I, I think that's what most people probably suffer from. I think there's people also who think of things like it's, it's easier. They always think it's easier than it is. And they kind of um, under, uh, estimate uh, themselves but I, th I think that uh, the, the real game changer for me in terms of this was break it down right but then also start small so for example when I wrote my thesis yep. every single day I would just start by just forcing myself to sit down and write like just two or three sentences just so that the, the page is no longer empty Get and most of the time, those two or three sentences were absolute horseshit, absolute garbage. But they got me over that hump of like, I haven't done anything yet. Now I've done something. It may be shit. It may be terrible and I can't use it, but I've done something. And now I'm in the mode of doing it. And what's also great, and this is something that I really use a lot as well, is I've made a decision of writing those things down. And because it's visible now, like you said as well, right? Like it's written down, it's there. I can now judge it. Is that good or bad? 
mm-hmm. right? But as, if there's nothing there, there's nothing to judge. I like it or I don't like it, right? So even well, if you write down garbage, it's more stimulating yeah. stimulus, yeah. Yeah, so even if you just start and it's complete crap what you're doing. So for example, in sports, if you if you just uh, if you're, you're really not motivated to practice, then you just put up a couple of shots or something in basketball, right? And the first shots you take are terrible, right? The shots don't matter. It's all about just the process of shooting, right? So it, it doesn't matter what I wrote. It's the process of actually thinking and writing and putting something down. And then it gets me a step further because now I can say what I wrote there is garbage, but it's garbage because of these reasons, and then maybe I'll do it this way instead. And then it starts flowing and it starts rolling. And once that kind of initial role is there, yep. it, it becomes yeah, self And then it becomes easy. And then like, the, if, if, I, if, I, if, if for example, I have to write a grant application, right? A grant application is always a big thing because you have to write text and the text is really important. You have to um, convince somebody to give you money for something you want to do. So that's always important. Then you have the financial plan, you have the dates from when until when you want to do it, and all of these things. So it's like this big package of things you have to do. And very rarely are you going to sit down in one day and do all of it. Yeah. So you just start with something that's and then break it down and keep going from there, right? So I'll just start by, for example, uh, maybe just writing down a couple of keywords, right? Just a couple of things keywords that I want to place in the text or just a couple of ideas for the project or brainstorming maybe for the finances I write down like um, for example we want to do 10 workshops over this one year and now all of a sudden I have something I can work with because each workshop requires this much uh, uh, personnel so this much money um, and, and if I have 10 of those then slowly I'm getting an understanding of how much money I actually need overall and it's the only fucking way to do it so Yep. to do that and now now i started using it in my, my my personal life as well like if i want to start doing the dishes which is always something i have to motivate myself for i believe you um, i cannot even I'm, motivate myself enough i'm just going to start by like like pre-cleaning them you know like if you have some oil in the pan i'll just take some paper and i'll kind of wipe it out and now the pan is ready to be to be washed uh, it's no longer oily but it's also not clean it's somewhere in between Yep. And I think I, I really would also recommend that to people who are struggling with these types of issues is, is break it down and just do a step, like just get a little bit yeah. further. Don't worry yeah. about getting yeah. far. Yeah. Just so get the step first step. step. Motivate you to go to the second step and the third step and the fourth one. Put you some, see the results, like you said, yeah. as well. Exactly. So achievable goals for a short period that will keep on you going uh, to achieve the bigger goal. That exactly. Is and, and really, that's the only way to achieve big goals, right? And if you look at, you know, sports, the, the ultimate yeah. goal is, is, is to win a championship. Um, there's no other way to get there besides to play every single game, right? You can't fast yeah. forward. You have to go yeah. through every single game. And no champion is undefeated, generally. Like, they're always going to have their losses. And so it's about the process. It's about dealing with the losses. And... Um, Felipe, how can we wrap this conversation up? We've gotten to a lot of different points. I think we've touched on a lot of really important stuff about motivation. I think motivation topic is going to be there throughout our whole podcast. This is not going to be our last episode. And I think people can already tell that we're generally quite motivated people. So there's going to be motivation swinging around all the time. But like, have we touched on the things that you wanted to touch on today? Have you said kind of what you what you uh, wanted to, or is there something still missing? Many things I want to say today. The problem is, as I said, I can talk way too much. Uh, I used to give a training that was 11 hours, uh, and I would talk for the 11 hours, not a problem. And I would go back home and then call my friends to talk a little bit more. Uh, so I'm never going to be able to reach everything that I wanted to reach when it comes to talking. We, we as your friends, call that the Felipe monologues. <laughs> And it's, it's totally difficult agree. to sit through sometimes, but you know, that's sorry. what friends are for. I try to work it's every fun. day in my life on speaking a little bit less, but it is a process. It's a long process. I do not motivate myself, but I have a long way to go. Uh, but there is one thing that I would like to talk is um, personalities and how to motivate different personalities, which we mm-hmm. kind of already touched it because we do have very different personalities, more or less, uh, but very similar at the same point. Uh, but for example, this is motivation, this is the internal drive. So I am a type of person who, as I told you from the beginning, I was asked, okay, why do I have to do that? Or 
you know what, give me a goal and I will achieve it. You don't have to tell me how to reach that shit. I will figure out my own way. I do not like how to be told how to get things done. I'm not saying that I know everything. I'm saying that most of the cases, I do like my freedom to see for me, what is the best or the easiest or the most product, productive way or profitable way. Uh, but during my life, at least in the, in the beginnings, let's say when I was, I think around 24, 25, I had my biggest project, it was pretty big. And I had to motivate a lot of people to work for my project instead of doing everything else that they had to do. And uh, I kind of struggled in the beginning because for me, the big picture was very clear. And I tried to show them the big picture as well. And I was like, how don't they get it? And we're not, mm -hmm. I'm not even staying this company. I'm a freelancer here. It's for their own well-being. Mm -hmm. uh, until certainly I saw that different personalities, different ambitions, different drives need different approaches. Mm. So I am the type of person who do not like to be told how to achieve my goal. I like it to give him my goal and the tools necessary to achieve that. But on the other hand, and I met many people of that, and I'm not saying there is a better or worse. I'm just saying there are different types of people who likes to be told exactly what to do for them is too cha not challenges, too tiring to take decisions the whole time. So for mm -hmm. them, it's a lot better. If you're more in a working environment, no, let me know exactly what I'm supposed to do. I will do my job and then I'll go home and be happy. Uh, when I was younger, I used to undermine those people a little bit because it's like, oh, you're just too lazy. You want to do monkey work. Nowadays, no, I see different. I, I cannot judge anyone. I'm not better or worse than anyone. I'm just different. And we all have our different goals to achieve and different ambitions. So I try to see that I cannot try to motivate to everyone they try, the way I try to motivate myself because that won't work. And uh, then I saw the necessity to get to know people more, uh, even though those little five minutes of small talk that you have in the beginning of the meeting when you talk mostly about the weather, how people react, how people comment, everything they see, so I can get a better idea of how the person is. And then I can see, all right, I think that that's how this person ticks. So maybe I could drive or motivate this person using this and this technique or this mm. way. Uh, that's something that grow on me that I didn't see in the beginning. And more and more nowadays, I know people who are very intelligent, they are very capable, but they just prefer to be told how to do things. Mm -hmm. And um, that is something that I struggle a lot in the beginning because I thought everybody wants their freedom. But you know, there's freedom from one side, but also not freedom from the other side. So nowadays, I just try to understand people better. For me, it's very important to see how people tick, how they react. First of all, not to offend them and to, to try to get the best out of them. Mm. Uh, so yeah, so that's the point I wanted to, to talk is how do you have to see the different personalities and have different approach. For example, when I used to give trainings and in one of my trainings, we talk exactly about leadership and how to motivate people. And, Everything that I would say is like, I'm never going to answer your questions if I yes or no one's thing. I always say more or less or depends on because everything depends on the context. Is that great freaking yeah. zone? I cannot tell you that's how you always should behave to motivate people if people are so freaking different. And that is one thing that I think is very important to bring is do not use yourself as a base for everything. If mm -hmm. you need to motivate other people, try to see how they they work, how they tick, what they, what motivate them, what they really aspire in life. And then you can see which approach works for them. Mm. Uh, for yourself, try to get to know yourself better and deeper. And then you can also help to motivate yourself because you cannot motivate someone if you do not know a little bit of this person to see what drives them and what they want to achieve. So if you want, need to wrap up, that is one of the last things that I'd like to, to put it out there. I love it, man. I love it. I really do. Because it's such an important point, man, that you make towards the end. Summarize it one more time. Let's practice summarizing. Motivation is something very important that we got to do to ourselves and many times do to other people as well. And in order to motivate correctly, you need to know what drives this person, this individual, what this person wants to achieve in life, what's really appealing to them. And only then you can see how to approach this person to motivate them to, to do this thing that they probably do not want to do it. Because let's face it, if we want to do it, we don't really need external motivation or such an internal motivation. We want to do it, we go and do it. Let me say, I wanted to have a whiskey today. I just went and got my whiskey. 
I didn't have to motivate myself to go all the way to the living room and get the bottle of whiskey. You I never just have to motivate did. yourself to drink, though, to be honest. But that's another topic. Um, no, and I love what you said about the personalities, Felipe. I think it's a nice way to round it off because what's really important when you're talking about, regardless, self-motivation or motivating others, you really have to factor in that we're human beings and we all have personalities and we're, we're all individual, right? So there's no one answer for, for everyone. So even when we sit here and we say, this is how we deal with our self-motivation, a lot of people, it's not gonna work for them not because they have a different personality. So that's what's really important, I think. is, And that's why I, I always have this like, this gag reflex when I hear like these like self-help gurus who are like, this is what you need to do to live a successful and happy life, you know? Yeah. And it's such there's bullshit. no recipe, man. There's no recipe. Yeah. They're, they're, it's, it's, it's open robbery, right? Like they're just taking your money and you're being like, woo, take my money, yeah, take it. Your faith, you know? man, and your beliefs and your hopes, that is horrible. Because there's no answer that works for everybody. And like, you really learn this so quickly as a teacher because there's no way you're gonna explain mm -hmm. something to one kid and the other kid is going to understand it explained the same way, which makes our, I mean, you know, you know, this topic for me is, is a big one, but you know, which makes it very core. It makes our education system stupid because there's yeah. one teacher explaining something one way and there's 30 kids in, one in front size of her. Kid in all. Yeah. There's maybe one kid there who's, who's like exactly that, that like who can learn it the way that that teacher is describing it. He's explaining it and the rest don't get it. And that's really the, the ultimately the reality that I face as well. I, work with students who come out of school not getting it mm -hmm. because the teacher explained it one way stubbornly there's no time to do it a different way there's no system in place to individualize the whole thing to give people different like nodes to latch on to right different nodes where you can be like all right i i don't quite get it this way mm -hmm. but this is something i can i can work with right? right so let's start there and maybe from there we can get here so well, like there's different there. ways yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And there's different ways of getting to your goal, basically, right? But as a teacher, you really have to do what you described. And I think it starts with empathy, yeah. but it goes a bit deeper because, you know, and, and this is something that you have to be careful with, I think, very reflective of if you are a coach. It is manipulation in a way, right? You're basically to guide on, a, on, a, on a deeper level, right? Manipulating somebody in order to do something that they wouldn't do on their own. But you're doing it in their best interest, right? Yeah. And, and, and hopefully you're doing it in the way that, that, that manipulation is necessary in the beginning that external, you know, push. Realization. but yeah. at some point it's, it's self-driving, right? So if that's, if you're doing it, that's, that's the right way to do it. If you're doing it in a way where they're dependent on you, then that person's never going to be able to do it. And they're always going to depend on delicious. you. So there's a lot of mistakes to make in coaching. And that's why there's so few good coaches or leaders or even good teachers really. Right. Okay. So it's really hard to do what we're talking about, which all sounds so simple. Yeah. Uh, and, and really the, the core of it to me is always like you, human beings are all different. So obviously, if we're working with human beings, yeah, this is going to be pretty fucking hard. Like, there's no illusion to be made about this. This is going to be a piece of cake to, to motivate everybody. I mean, this works for me. Right. It doesn't work for you. It doesn't work that way. Like, everybody has a different way of thinking, of living, of moving, of acting, of everything. And it depends on their environments. It depends on their personality. There's, it's so complex, right? So that's why I think, on the one hand, it's, it can get overwhelming. If you have that ambition of helping others, because, right, I'm sure you've had these frustrations. You described it before yeah. with that company uh, that you were with, and I'm sure it wasn't just one company of, of you did everything you can to help, but it just doesn't work. It just and, and and you know, out of maybe, let's say if I've worked with 100 students over the last couple of years, maybe 15 to 20 of them have really been successful. You can't help who doesn't want to have help, man. That starts already there. That's it. And and the thing is, the trick is. Be happy with those 15 or 20 out of the 100 yes. instead That's of saying, fuck, I didn't reach 80. I mean, you should always have that kind of, you know, that, um, that drive to be like, how can I reach more? Yeah. But I think it's a mistake if you then put that burden on yourself and say, I didn't reach those 80. Because those 80 are on a different path, perhaps, right? And there maybe it just wasn't possible at this point in time. Yeah, exactly. And something really cool that motivates me, for example, is the long-term picture because mm -hmm. so many times I thought I didn't have an impact. I failed at motivating this person, but it just took a bit of time for them to really work through that and internalize that, gain a couple more experiences that were connected to the experience mm -hmm. that I gave them. And I meet them a couple years later and it looks like everything that I had initially thought didn't work, worked perfectly and better than I could have imagined. It just took some time. And I think that's also really important with this whole topic. Uh, and in general, in life and goals and, and all this thing is, 
is everybody has a different time frame as well, right? And everybody's at a different stage. Yes. So that's something you have to keep in mind is not just be empathetic, but also be uh, understand, know enough of, of what we're talking about in order to be like, yo, everybody has a right to be where they are right now. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not going to force them to be, you know, 100 meters further along their way, because that's not how it's going to work. That's not how human beings work. And, 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 and even if it did work with this one person, it's not going to work with this other person. Yeah. So that, that complexity can be overwhelming, but ultimately that is my, my internal motivation to do the work, right? Exactly. It never like the, the, the difficulty, the degree of difficulty never goes down. No. And that, is that, that challenge, right? And if we're talking about like, maybe this is a good way to wrap it up. Like what is your main motivation, Felipe? And my main motivation in life is to uh, face up to challenges. Yeah, I like that. I like I'm to obsess with challenges just to challenge. make it more emphasis. I'm I obsessed. Kind of with person, once one is done, say, the next one has to come. To be done. Then I say, hold my gin. Let me give it a second. Hold your jeans. My gin, gin, gin. You know the drink, gin, G-I-N. Normally mixed with tonic, water, maybe some lime or cucumber. Depends on you. I put some orange juice. That's the Felipe special. I think I think I have an idea of what what you what you mean now. I hope the other people as well. What, what about the gin? Okay, so let's say like I'm exactly like you and trying to, to corroborate with you uh, that I am time type of person who likes to be challenged and is motivated yeah. by challenge. So when everybody says no, it's impossible to do it. Nobody can does it can do it. Sorry. Then I say all right. Instead of holding my beer, and that's when I put the gin because I prefer gin than beer. Mm. Please hold my gin. Let me give it a try. Yeah. So yeah, I like when people say you can't do it. All right, really? Then let me do it. I'm not saying that I always do it, I always manage, but I like to try. And if I succeed, it's great. If I don't succeed, well, I learn it. And I think that quality is a quality that every good leader should have. I agree. Right? Be challenged the whole time. Nobody needs to tell a leader where the next challenge is. They're yeah. always looking for the next challenge, right? And the thing is, the bigger the challenges get, right? And this is my story. So I have a challenge of, of, for lack of better way of saying it, revolutionizing the education system, right? So to, to, to make some real fundamental changes to improve the education system, that's such a fucking big thing yeah. that I really don't even like on a daily basis think of it in those terms because it's yeah, so like, what, what does that even mean, right? Like it's one of those things, again, where you have to break it down yes. and I'm working through the steps and maybe at some point it'll make a difference, right? But that, um, that bigger goal is what's gonna keep me keep me going in terms of a challenge, but also the understanding that I'm not gonna reach a goal that big on my own. Yeah. Oh yeah. Where the motivation factor comes in because now I realize that I can't achieve this on my own. So how do I get other people to help me along this goal, along this path, along this challenge? And in order to do that, I have to motivate them. Yeah. You need to bring the vision to them. Yeah. But then now the difference is to bring it full circle as opposed to when I was younger, now that is a, a self-defined goal, you know, and the motivating of others is almost effortless because it, it goes parallel, it goes hand in hand with having to motivate myself every day. Yeah, yeah exactly. So if I, it's easier to motivate others every day if I'm all, always having to motivate myself first. So before yeah. I leave the house, I have to get motivated. So that yeah. means as soon as I've left the house, you already have a more motivated Andre in front of you than when you met me early on in the morning, because it's part of my daily process. It has to be to motivate myself, to inspire myself, to go out and, and perform all the actions that I need to do, right? That volition aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Don't go out and actually do it, what I have the motivation to do, right? And I think it's easier to connect those two things we had as well, right? The self-motivation yeah. and the motivating others. And you said it before as well, right? So even that is bringing it full circle. If you start with motivating yourself, the motivating of others becomes easier. Yeah, it becomes more manageable. Because you see, you see how it works, how it goes, and you see the importance of it. And then you are kind of forced. There's no way around it. It's like knowledge. When you get enough knowledge, there is no way around behaving and look at things into some particular way. Uh, you're too enlightened. And uh, I think that's when you go. When you motivate, and you have to do this struggle every day to you. And then, bam, you can do for others as well. As long as you are empathic enough that you want to get to know people enough that you can motivate them. 
because otherwise then you go back what we said you just try to motivate them based on your own self and that's going to lead to failure for sure and we don't want to be failures Felipe. do you want to be a failure nope not really i think failure is inherent in the try and error process but if you balance it out you can't be a failure you have to be a success and you can only be a success failing a few times but mm. when you see the profit and loss statement should be positive so so you want to you want to fail but you don't want to be a failure you don't want to fail but fail should be okay is inherited in the process of developing and learning right but don't let the failures define, define you yes. i think that's kind of how i understand it right now like failure is somebody who sees themselves as having failed at something yes. right whereas the way we're looking at it is we are, we're failing along the way but we're always taking from those failures something that'll move us closer to the success and i think that's i think ultimately that if you're putting putting a term on it like that is the success in itself right the success is never actually the goal that's being reached the success is that everyday mentality of working through the failures and the challenges so i think really ultimately success and failure in my eyes is not something that i that you achieve or you don't it's achieve long. it's a mentality it's a disposition yeah right successful people are successful regardless of the results of their actions yeah and regardless of what happened, I mean, I think there is this thing from uh, Rocky, you know, the movie? It's Rocky, I don't know, five, six, ten, whatever the hell they have so many nowadays, uh, is the one with uh, Rocky Balboa's son, son. And I don't remember exactly. The new one, the, the Hollywood new one with the, the, the. It's not with Creed, it's not with the boss. Not the, not the black guy, right? Not the no, black no, guy, the, the Creed the boss. Black I think it's the one before black guy. Actually, I'm not sure. I don't remember exactly. Rocky's son can't be black, right? No, no, he's pretty white. I mean, he could if his mother was black, but Is she? he's pretty white. No, I don't think so. It was Aud Adrian. Adrian! Do you, do you ever find out how he's Rocky met his, how Rocky's son met his mother? I don't know. No. Uh, well, I, I'm pretty sure they <laughs> met in the, the, the uterus. But anyway, my point they was- They met in the uterus? Yes, yes, because, you know, mother and son, that's kind of when they meet. Um, so the point was, uh, just talking, I don't remember exactly what happened, but was fascinating. trying to tell, sorry? No, you're just, oh, it's just fascinating oh, right. what you're saying. The uh, words that are coming out of your mouth are blowing oh, my mind. Man, I have my moments. <laughs> step by step, you know, to that. There's no big explosion. There's little tiny micro explosions happening. Exactly. That's the big overload. Uh, yeah. Felipe, I'm, I'm very positively impressed with what we managed to pull out of this. Good, uh, too. I think, but, but at least for me, it was a very fun conversation. I think I had a great time. Yeah, I always have a good time. But this was, I think, also, and this was, was what was important. We knew we were going to have a good time. We enjoyed talking to each other. We we know the nuggets are going to come out. Um, we know we know the fun factor is going to be there, but we didn't know if it was going to be presentable, right? If it was going to be presentable to a, to a general public, whoever watches this. And I think we we did we did pretty well, surprisingly well with that. And I think it has a lot to do with. With your 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 professional setup, I think played a big role. It gave me that confidence. I am a motivated man. Like, like we're not just doing this, you know, willy nilly. We're not just doing this. Like uh, let's give it a shot. We're we're in it for real, you know. And this we're is gonna the first episode. The There's going to be further episodes. We're going to touch on different topics. We're going to tell outrageous stories. I mean, the stories we told today are mild in comparison to what we'll probably Nothing. get to. And we also need to select the stories because again, my parents are listening to it. Uh, I don't know if my nieces will listen to it. So uh, it needs to be filtered. Not that when, I did something that they would not be proud or that I could not present to them. It's not like my family doesn't know my whole story. They know everything, of course. It's just- Everything? It's just like, well, everything? <laughs> well, the everything is relative. I would right? hope, Felipe, for their <laughs> well-being and safety that they don't know everything. Well, they know everything that they should know. Let me put it like that. Yeah, oh, See, even the spirits in my apartment are not liking this topic right now. Uh, anyway, so, but yeah, definitely, there's quite a few things that we can talk about and the stories that we went through has been what, almost 15 years, 14 years friendship nowadays? Has been a while. Time, yeah, all the time, man. I, I, I don't think I'm leaning too far to the window to say that we're, we're too quite uh, colorful individuals uh with a drive to live life you know? so we've, we've 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 seen we've seen some shit we've been through some shit and uh we'll gladly talk about it but we'll talk about it through a filter yeah all right 
course. We've got people listening, so we got to be a little bit more careful. If we don't want to offend anyone, let, let us put like that. I think we will offend people along the oh, way. Yes. But and I think we, as we, little we people would do a terrible job if we didn't offend people along the way. I hope we offended somebody along the way as well, true, true. right? Because we don't want to be too, too cream colored, you know, too beige. You know, okay. that wasn't our intention going into this. So hopefully I somebody read. was offended along the way. And if not, Mexicans are lazy and now it's happened. So I can say that I lived in Texas. I, I know a lot of Mexicans and they're all incredibly lazy people. And yeah, so we're going to offend people, Felipe, is the point I was trying to make. And I think in general, I don't have Mexican friends listening anyway, so there's no no worries. Yeah, don't I worry. do, motherfucker. And then listen to my it. Yeah, let me just say something. I don't so, think you guys are lazy. I think you guys are just like Brazilians. We enjoy life way too much, and you want to balance. You don't want to only work like some countries, like some people in the very cold places, you know, when they speak, hello, we get the Zinan. Um, we like microaggression, is what I call that. Microaggression. He knows nothing. He knows nothing. I got offended. He's just jammers. Yeah. Just a typical German. Just a typical German speaking to you with an American accent. Just, you know. That's how every German sounds, man. That's representative how every German feels of, like it and of how my they people. And their view of Mexicans, which is we all think they're lazy, Felipe. Come on, <laughs> let's not sugarcoat it. We know the facts, and Germany I mean, is a place. Germany is a country that's Trump. very poor. Trump. The it's, food is incredible, all right, but the food the isn't Mexican. motivating them enough, apparently. It may be all the cheese, maybe all the the queso, that's weighing them down. Um, good. Meat, ah, meat. Ah, meat. Okay, we got to move on now because that yeah. topic. Uh, Can't help myself. Now I'm hungry. Felipe is officially triggered. Yes. Uh, Meat is all it takes to get there, and I think this is a good time to to cut him off. Otherwise, yes, we'll go on a rant I about how cheap is not meat, and those technicalities we'll get into someday, uh, but not today. I'm looking forward. Um, to Felipe, how do you want to how do you want to end this first roller coaster ride? Uh, I would like to Let's say... not crash. I'm sorry. Let's not end it with a crash. So no, no, I will words say... carefully. I am very happy, actually, how it came out. I would like to tell people that if you feel like it's a little bit too raw, that's great. That's exactly what we're looking for. Uh, we're not trying to have any proper sensor here or, oh, no, let's just do it whenever we think that's great and we don't fuck up and we do blah, 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 because never going to happen. I always fuck up to begin with and I always yeah. curse the whole time. So we try to think about doing it. fuck up a couple of times, but it's okay. We talked about it. It's okay. Yeah. It's and, um, so. that is, that is, I was perfect, but in the process, that's try and error. You gotta fail sometimes. You gotta fuck yeah. up sometimes. Uh, but yes, I hope people actually enjoy it, uh, got a little bit more enlightened, and definitely entertain it. Um, I wouldn't mind if people actually tell us about topics that maybe we could discuss about. Mm. Maybe there are things that we are not thinking yet. So viewer, viewer suggestions. Tell us what you yes. want us to talk about. Exactly. And we'll do our best. Yeah, and if you didn't like it, well, fuck you. Don't watch it. Yeah. Fuck you. Seriously, what's wrong with you? God. Why'd you watch it past 10, 15 minutes if you didn't like it or like looking at us or listening to us? And if fuck you are you. families and that why watch it, then well, fuck you as well. You had to. Yeah. I'm sorry, you're my family. Yeah. Oof. You're here for the good and the bad. Uh, okay, Felipe. I think that's a good place to stop. I agree. <laughs> and let's see how we can carry this momentum over to the next one. Sure. What we know for sure is that we are going to do this whenever we feel like it. Yes, so no pressure. It's no not pressure. gonna be like a once a month kind of a re yeah, schedule no regularly. Idea. We may do, you know, five within two days or, or half of one over a year, you know, like we'll do it the way we wanna do it. And it's gonna come out raw and authentic. And um, yeah, I think we did okay with that today for Felipe. If you don't like it, shut up. If you like it, share it. If you don't like it, shut up. Yes. Perfect. And that's, that's the message we want to give to our listeners. I agree. So and if we told you to shut up, then uh, we can't hear you now. So that's good. And thank you for doing it. Thank you for listening to us, to uh, respect us. Um, uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you for putting up with us and um, for shutting up our personalities up. for for whatever how much time this was. I know, cool, fuck. And <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah. Felipe, that microphone is going to be there next time. Those glasses are going to be there oh, next time. time. Uh, will will the watch be there next time? Uh, and that's that continuity, right? That we were talking about when it carry over. That's right, because I'm actually moving, right? So I'll try to keep at least the painting behind me. Okay. The microphone that we keep, the painting probably, uh, the rest might be a little bit different the next time. But you know, that's actually good because with me, you never know what I'm going to be doing or where I'm going to be. So I think that could bring some, yeah. some... That's the danger. That's the devilish nature I was talking about earlier. <laughs> that's where it comes from. You have, no, you have no foundation. You're all over the place and you're, you're creating danger zones. But that's good, man. That's why we're friends. I am. And I think, you know, something that kind of um, I didn't enjoy as much today, to be honest, was how much we agreed with each other. Yes, and true. that's not to say that I, I, I don't like agreeing with you, but I think in general, you know, we picked a topic that we can both kind of get on one page. And I can't wait to get on topics where we're on completely different pages. So and that's I. really where the fun is going to be. I hardly fucking swear this time. I felt like a good boy. My mother's going to be proud, I'm sure. Yeah. I, I don't know if you were as raw today as you thought you were, Felipe. I think maybe right. you need to True. look inside, self-reflect, self-motivate, and, and get a couple more F-bombs coming next time. No, oh, don't worry about it. They'll bomb. Yeah, they maybe let's fuck, pick... Fuck, 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 fuck. Maybe let's pick something a little bit more controversial next time. I see the Mexican yeah. thing got you riled up. Maybe there's something there. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. We don't want to. We don't want to offend people. Um, no. Look, I say I would love Mexican to lazy. No offense. Experience in how I clarify that. So just to, be, just to be sure. Excuse, what? Sorry. I, I would love to talk about meat and vegetarians. Even more yeah. because my mother is a vegetarian. It. So I think that I can say that they are crazy. Come on. Yeah. That's it, man. I mean, I think they're crazy too. But different kinds of crazy, and and I think you're crazy in general for your, your the way you the way you look at meat, and I think it's a great topic because it has a lot to do with the Brazilian and you and all of these things. It's very cultural, it's very cultural how we eat and how we look at meat, and I think it's a big big topic that we will talk about on another day my, when my you're a bit more raw and authentic than you were today because I think you can step it up. Whenever it's okay for a start. Why are we All was there, but I think you can go. I think you can go a bit harder. I think I like doubled. I have a little chuckle zone at the moment. I, I think I doubled you in f bombs today, and that's not necessarily a look I'm going for to be, to be the one who's swearing more than you. That is I'll take that today. I'll take that role today and, and wear it with pride. Uh, but fuck you, man. Get get into it and, and give me a little bit more. Oh, you do. Don't worry. Uh, I'm not gonna fuck up last night. All right, dude. Much love, much cool. appreciation for, for the truth that you were spitting today and uh, like, look forward to Looking the next one. Good work. Listeners, yeah. listeners, if you're out there, hello, listeners. Can you hear them? I could. No, have. but they can hear us, Felipe, because that's how this works and not the other way around. And what we want them to know, what we want our, our dear listeners to know is that um, interact with us, you know, tell us what you think how did we do this time around what do you want more of um and also some topics right some topics that we can get into what do you want us to talk about um and uh, please the more controversial the better and felipe what else what else is there well take it easy everyone enjoy and be motivated to get your fucking shit done yeah is that it yeah that's pretty much it for today that's it all right take it easy everyone Bye-bye. Get fucking shit done.